This is a coin-operated storage box controller. Uh, you'll find these in uh, subway stations, uh, uh, shopping malls, that kind of thing. Uh, you have this controller attached to a big metal box uh, with a big lock on it and you can put your valuables in there while you're off doing other things. Uh, so imagine you've arrived at the storage box, you're carrying something really big and heavy, you check your pocket and you've got just enough change to get by. You have exactly 750. So you get to a box, you start putting your money in, and first thing that happens, your money's worth negative one cent. And next thing you know, you put all your money in there, hoping it's gonna recover, but it does not. You've put the correct sum in, it still wants four euros out of you, you're angry, it swallowed your coins, you're gonna be complaining to the mall management. And that's why we have this thing here. Because sometimes when you put money in it, it counts it as being worth negative one cent. And that is a bizarre issue, isn't it? Uh, and I've gone through many steps to verify what the issue is and I have solved it. Uh, it's not what you would perhaps imagine uh, from the start. Uh, so these uh, c controllers is made up of basically three boards. We have the a completely standalone coin acceptor. We have a power supply for that and the main computer board doing all the actual locker stuff and well, basically everything. Uh, so I have a bunch of these boards, in fact, seven of them over here and all of them had the same or very similar issues where they would just count for money wrong sometimes. A couple of them wouldn't start, we fixed those as well. And since these are about 20 years old, they're from 2000, uh, I started by going through, fixing the power supply, that did nothing. I cleaned all the contacts a million times, that did nothing. I just made sure the PCB was in perfect shape. I checked the film caps, checked the electrolytics, checked the chips, swapped the chips, did everything I possibly could, and it would not work. So, uh the only thing that all these chips have in common, as a possible source of issue, is a battery-backed RAM stick. But they have an, an, initialisa an initialization feature, so that you can initialize fresh sticks by just flicking that to dip switch to null, and voila, now the RAM has been initialized, and the device is ready to use. So that should not give any issues when installing new chips because the manufacturer was obviously thoughtful enough to consider that these chips only last about 10 years before the internal lithium cell runs out and you have to replace them, so they should just work fine, right? Well, no. The only other uh, constant we have that's the same on all of these boards across board revisions and chips and things is the firmware in the ROM. So this is a window ROM or one-time programmable ROM, and I've read those out and uh, found that they're all the same. So you wouldn't expect them to have different issues as they had if the ROM was the failure. So the ROM is actually intact. We don't have a hardware failure there. So I started scratching my head a bit and got out a programmer and started just putting random things into this battery-backed uh, RAM thing. And that finally started giving some more promising symptoms because from a factor of these are initialized as being all ones. Uh, if you read it in hex edit, it has F, 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 F forever. Uh, and I, start, I started by trying to initialize one as zero, 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 zero. And if you initialize this to as in zero, zero, uh, instead of counting negative one cent sometimes, it counts zero sometimes, which I figured was that's a bit odd. You know, this thing is supposed to be initializing the RAM when you uh, when you do the null thing. It shouldn't have any issue uh, with a chip that's initialized to anything when you stick it in. So I started fuzzing it. I started initializing it to zero one zero one zero one over and over, and then it started drawing. I think it was a two fifty six per 
incorrect coin. And then I initialized it to something else and it drew a different amount of money. And finally, after fussing it and just putting random values in random places, I found that the issue with this thing is that the firmware does not initialize the RAM properly. Uh, this particular version of these boards uh, just fail to install a few coin variables in the right place. And uh, we can have a look in the hex editor to see exactly what's going on. And uh, by installing the correct values, we have been able to fix these boards. So if I take this uh, demo chip out, uh, I can show you that this works absolutely perfectly. All right, and we've now got one of my magical memories installed. Let's try and store something in this box again. Ta-da! A perfect result. So, uh, that's the only thing we've changed. We've only changed the uh, RAM chip and the data within. So let's go have a look at the hex editor and see what exactly is actually going on here. All right, so here's our hex editing workbench. So uh, to extract the uh, chips, uh, I've used a Gallup 3 parallel port program from the Stone Age because the chips too are from the Stone Age. They are the ST branded uh, M. 48Z12 of varying speed grades, uh, so you can't really use anything modern to extract them. Uh, and this is what we get out of a fresh new chip, a uh, completely blank uh, data, only ones all over. So let's have a look at a couple different ones. Okay, so here we are looking at four different versions of data you can get out of a RAM chip. So uh, in the top left, we have uh, what happens if you put a completely new chip into the uh, coin operated box and do the null function and read what you get out. So uh, this entire section is just data that it uses uh, for, for its operation with the last few bytes being over here. Uh, this is what you get if you put a zeroed out chip that you've just initialized to zeros into the program and you get pretty much the same thing except you can see that it doesn't write to a whole bunch of places since you never, since uh, they remain zeros here and uh, they remain Fs here so it, we can see which parts it is modifying. And uh, the bottom two files, this is my fix file and uh, here I've highlighted uh, the data that needs to be modified in order to make these boxes work. and. Uh, this is the file you get out of the RAM if you put the fixed uh, chip, one which has this data written to it, into the box and do the null function. This is what you get out. Uh, so let's run through how we came to figuring this out because this just looks like a big jumbled mess. Uh, so the way I went about figuring something was up with this was I started uh, putting 0, 1 into all of these. So it would be 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1 all over. Uh, and I just uh, cut down the serial ones uh, from the, the end until I got to a point where the data started to change, where the behavior of the machine started to change. Uh, the uh, When I got to, I believe, uh, this round, uh, this row, uh, where I had uh, everything just zero and everything above here, zero one, uh, it would uh, do 16 cents rather than negative rather than zero or some other value. So that uh, told me we know uncertain terms, but this rough area around here is where it's reading the coin value data from. Uh, so I just started messing around, putting various data here, spending a lot of time with, with a Windows calculator, calculating it uh, hexadecimal to decimal. And finally, I figured out that uh, this, uh, well, Let's look here, that these four digits were the value of the 50 cents because setting that to hexadecimal 32 fixed the problem. Then these four digits are the one euros because setting that to hexadecimal 64, which turns into 100 decimal, fixes the one euro. And uh, these four digits 
uh, are the uh, two euro coins. And instead of that, you see eight, which uh, corresponds to decimal uh, 200, fixes the two euro. And these machines only accept 50 cents, uh, one euro, and two, two euro coins. Uh, and uh, that's basically the extent of the repair. Now, the question is why on earth is this even a thing? Why should you have to write these particular values to this spot in the RAM? Uh, because the machine should be reading the coin values out of the ROM or some static thing since it only accepts three different types of coins. And I think I have a reasonable understanding of what happens. Because some of the data it does change on its initialization is up here. And you can see the same pattern 0032, 0064, 00 C8. So I think what, I, what we're dealing with here is just a software bug. Uh, they have accidentally programmed the ROM uh, to make the pro process write the coin value data up here instead of down here. Or they've accidentally made the processor read data from down here instead of up here. Either of those things have happened. And I think the manufacturers just uh, realized this and instead of burning a bunch of new ROMs, uh, they've just uh, programmed the RAM chips prior to shipping the machines out. And uh, what's happened then is uh, after 10, 15 years, when the ROM, RAM chips start breaking and they get replaced, the machines uh, start failing. And since they are fetching the coin value from here, where a new chip just says FFFFFFFFF, uh, meaning negative one in some kind of signed integer thingamajig programmy thing I don't understand, uh, they just fail. And uh, you are essentially uh, prohibited from ever replacing the battery backed RAM on this particular version of the ROM, uh, which is why we have so many of these failed boards, which all have the same issue, where they just subtract descent randomly. Now, why we don't see them subtract descent every time, I actually don't know. Uh, I theorize that it might be a bug that it's sometimes failing to read data from the ROM and instead reading it from the RAM, but then it makes no sense that it would have the same data over here. So I think it might be some kind of RAM integrity check thing uh, where it just will randomly uh, read data from the RAM to make sure that it's okay because these things can be powered on for months or even years sometimes and the RAM chip might fail during operation. So if you have a failure of a RAM it's just going to co collect garble garbled garbage data out of there and the customer is going to get angry and someone's going to get notified that the box has failed uh, so that repairs can be issued. That's my leading theory right now or they're just evil and are trying to install some kind of DRM thing uh, to just uh, uh, essentially planned obsolescence of these things uh, so that you have to replace the boards uh, when the RAM chip goes bad uh, because they figured no one would bother figuring this out. But when you have a, a lot of these boards failing in the same exact way for no apparent reason, you, you someone's gonna start investigating it sooner or later, and we have, and we've fixed it. So if you happen across one of these boxes, it uh, does a, a negative one cent when you try and put a euro in it. Uh, all you need to do is take out the, the RAM, put a new one in, and program these numbers on these addresses, you can see right there, into them, and it's gonna be fine forever. Now, the boards have other issues, they're gonna have caps failing and all that sort of stuff, but that's just basic maintenance. Uh, I have replaced the electrolytics on these, just as a matter of course when uh, having them here anyway. We, we're also going to have to do a bunch of service on the actual controllers for the boxes, because sadly, out of the things that f do fail, uh, the capacitors on this board go bad and um, since we have a switching regulator there uh, that's going to mean that uh, these uh, coin acceptors are going to start failing and probably breaking if we uh, don't also fix those boards at the same time so i'm probably going to be tasked to fix a shit ton of those if i'm unlucky but that's the way it goes at least it's an easy job but yeah that's the story of uh, 
how we got these guys fixed. Very exciting. I was very skeptical when I first got to handle this project because it was just such an obscure fault. And to make matters worse, I actually had no good working boards to compare to. Uh, I have seven of these processor boards and every single one was failed with one issue or another. I had no reference, so it was like, eh. If I'd had one that was just working, I would have figured out right away that there was a difference in the RAM uh, that wasn't getting it initialized properly because among the first things being done was just read the ROM, read the RAM, do they look okay? Uh, but since we have the 100% failure rate on the stuff we did have, there was nothing to go on. Uh, I don't think a single one of these RAM chips uh, are still alive in their original uh, iteration, uh, since they're so old by now. And they do seem to fail even though they're powered on all the time, which is a bit of a shame. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's the way that's the way it goes. However, in uh, lacking working RAM chips, we I also have a few completely failed ones. And these proved to be very important because these just returned garbled data. And while one of them would cause the box to just not boot at all, I think it's uh, this one, our Red 8 right there. You can see it's just a jumbled mess inside of random trash. I think one of them was just kind of a little failed. And this one would return random coin values instead of, uh, instead of, uh, yeah, that one's also completely failed. It would return random coin values instead of a uh, negative one. So your coin would be worth all kinds of weird shit all the time. Uh, these are all returning the same garbled crap. And it's probably because I haven't tried programming them and the coin cells are dead. Yeah, but yeah, the one that returned the random values was just, huh, that, that made me scratch my chin a bit and go, was that one different? And moving that RAM chip about uh, would uh, make the problem follow along. And that's kind of what hinted me that there was something with an initialization thing not really working right. So there you go. But yeah, that's uh, how you fix one of these guys. Uh, I have no idea what these guys are actually called. The labeled B. Haven't seen any real branding on any of this stuff actually. So let's just call it the coin boxes that look like this. Oh, there we go. They are System KWM Carl W. Mueller M. Harfen 32 D 38112 Braunschweig. That's the brand of this thing. So yeah, that's how you fix them. Cheerio.